Welcome to Take Back Your Country. I'm David Flint. And once again, it's impossible not to consider the case of Joe Biden because the President of the United States is not only the Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces of the United States, he is also, at least since 1941, the leader of the free world. And we could not have a worse leader than Biden has demonstrated himself to be. It wasn't so much that he left Afghanistan, it was the way that he did it. He surrendered the country to the terrorist Taliban. He surrendered the wonderful, powerful Bagram Air Base. He allowed the prison there at the Air Base to be opened by the Taliban. It was filled with about 5,000 terrorists. He left behind $85 billion of the very best military equipment in the world, which is probably now being seen by the Chinese communists and the Tehran mullahs and the Russians and being re-engineered backwards so that they could copy the latest weapons. And he's made sure that the Taliban are now the best weaponed terrorists in the world. But in addition, he's done something which no American president would ever do. He's left American citizens behind, a vast number. They're minimizing that too, but it's probably vaster than they say. Plus, some very loyal, thousands of very loyal Afghans who worked for the United States in the West and for freedom, who are now going to become the victims of the very primitive Taliban. This is an absolutely appalling situation. He is clearly incompetent. As Robert Gates, Obama's defense secretary, said, he's been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the last four decades. But on top of that, on top of that, Biden has always been a politician, a politician not known for his competence, but also a politician celebrated for his corruption. The whole Biden family has turned into a corrupt entity involved in the sale of access and influence into the very heart of Washington. And that access and influence has been sold to foreign oligarchs, not only Ukrainian, but Russian, but also Chinese communist. The situation is absolutely appalling. And he has not been backward in boasting about this. There is a video available on the internet where you can see him boasting about how he was going to cut off American aid to the Ukraine if the president did not sack the prosecutor who was investigating the affairs of a corporation in which his son, Hunter Biden, was assured of a strong interest. And he not only boasted that, he did that in front of the cameras, which suggests that he's not only incompetent, he's not only corrupt, but he's also rather stupid. But it also confirms how absolutely corrupt the American mainstream media is in not playing that up, in not showing that to the American people during the election. And also how extraordinary are so many in the media in Australia, the elites in Australia, the establishment in Australia, who would have any truck with this and who clearly indicated that of the candidates in the last presidential election, Biden was their favorite. It's clear that every policy decision he has taken of any or every significance since coming to office, whether foreign or domestic, has been against the interests of the United States and against the interests of the free world. The question is, 
is he a Manchurian candidate? Or perhaps he's like the uh, the frog in the fable concerning the frog and the scorpion. And the scorpion who can't swim wants the frog to take him across the creek, across the river. The frog is very wary and thinks that the scorpion may well sting him, but then realizing that if the scorpion were to sting him, they would both die. The scorpion who can't swim would drown, and of course the frog would die. And then when he decides to take the scorpion halfway across, he suddenly feels a sting in his back and he screams as he's dying, why did you do that? We'll now both drown. And the scorpion replies, I know, but I can't help it. It's in my nature. Well, is it in the nature of Joe Biden to be like that scorpion? Is it in his nature to do everything which will damage the interests both of the United States and, of course, of the free world? He should, of course, be impeached. He should, of course, for his obvious cognitive decline, be removed under the 25th Amendment, but the result would be almost as unpleasant, Kamala Harris would become the president or exercise the powers of the presidency. If the coming elections, the House and part Senate elections next year are conducted with any integrity, it is most likely that the Democrats, who've turned into a party of the far left, will lose both houses and this will act as a considerable constraint on Biden, who will be very much, for the rest of his term, a lame duck president. This is all the very best that we can hope for. And let us hope that that takes place. I'm David Flint, and this is Take Back Your Country.